Hello everyone. Today's video is about ancient Egypt and we're going to very briefly look at a huge time period using the grapes method. If you haven't heard about that before, the G is for geography, R, religion, achievements, political system, economy, and society. By the end of this video, you should be able to answer the following three questions. One, how did geography affect the economy of ancient Egypt? Two, which achievement do you think had the greatest impact on ancient Egypt and why? And finally, three, identify two examples of how religion affected Egypt's way of life. Here we go. You ready? When we study ancient Egypt, you're talking about over a thousand year time frame. And that, that time is broken up in Egypt into three different categories. You have the Old Kingdom from 2700 to 2200 BCE, which stands for before the Common Era. Then in between each stage is something called an intermediate period where usually things are not good. After the Old Kingdom, there had been a drought and there was uh, starvation for a while. And then the Middle Kingdom begins. So that's about 2050 to 1800 BCE. This is known as the Golden Age for ancient Egypt. And finally, after another intermediate period, you have the New Kingdom. So those are the three different periods that make up ancient Egypt. So we're going to start with geography. And geography is the study of land, water, climate, and how people interact with the earth. So where is Egypt? If you look in the lower left-hand corner, there is a world map, and Egypt is shaded in red. Okay, it's in northeastern Africa. It's about the size of Texas in the United States. And it was divided before 3200 BCE into what was called Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. Now here's the confusing part. Upper Egypt was south of Lower Egypt. And if you look at the map, you can see Lower Egypt at the top. A little more about geography, and you cannot look at Egypt without knowing about the Nile River. This has been called the gift of the Nile for the Egyptian people because it is their lifeblood. The four early river civilizations all begin around rivers. And that is because the river gives the people water to drink as well as to water their crops. Now, talking about the Nile specifically, once a year, in about July, it would overflow, it would flood, and then when the waters receded, it left behind very fertile soil. So the Egyptian people were gifted not just with the water of the Nile, but great soil for farming. Okay, moving on to the religion. The early Egyptians were polytheistic, which means that they believed in more than one god. In fact, they believed in over 2,000 gods. Yeah, try remembering that if you think this is hard to remember, right? So Osiris is one of the main gods that was most worshipped, the god of the underworld. And if you look at the pictures, and if you've ever been to museums or seen other pictures, of Egyptian gods, many times they're half human and half animal. They're often represented by animals such as lions and cats and rams, and sometimes you'll see just like the cat, that's a very famous uh, statue you may have seen, 
Also, when it, uh, the gods, speaking of the gods, the Pharaoh, who is the king of Egypt, is considered, while he's alive, half man and half god. And the Egyptians believed when he died, he would become a god. So there were many rituals followed by the ancient people. And the most famous is mummification. The Egyptians were very advanced when it came to preserving the body. When someone would die, there would be, um, they would be wrapped in cloth. And then jewels and other treasures that they owned would be added to the body. And the body would be put in what's called a sarcophagus, which is on the left-hand side is a picture of a sarcophagus. And in the tomb where the body was placed, they would add drink and food and riches because they believed in an afterlife. Once you died here on earth, you went on to an afterlife that was very similar to life on earth. So you would want your stuff with you. Another interesting belief that I, uh, I was kind of, another interesting belief was that once you die, the god of the dead, Anubis, would weigh your heart on a scale. He would put an ostrich feather on one half of the scale and your heart on the other side of the scale. And if your heart was lighter than the ostrich feather, then you lived a good life and you could go on to your afterlife. But if your heart was heavier, than the ostrich feather, feather, then an Egyptian demon would eat it. Hmm. There are so many achievements that we can talk about from ancient Egypt. There could be slide after slide after slide, but I'm going to hit a few of the big ones. One of the first and the most famous are the pyramids, which are the structures that even today we do not fully understand how the ancient Egyptian people were able to build these mathematically perfect architectural structures. The Egyptians also had writing, which not all of the early civilizations had, and it was called hieroglyphics, and it was little pictures. A lot of the hieroglyphics was written on papyrus sheets, which is one of the first types of paper. This was made from a leaf of a plant. A couple more achievements were the calendar. The Egyptian calendar had 12 months and each month had 30 days. It was almost identical to the calendar we use today. The only thing they didn't take into account for many years was that quarter of a day that we turned into a leap year but they did eventually figure out that they were off a little bit and they every four years they made a one extra day in the calendar and it was for festivals. Then they had clocks. They had two different kinds of clocks, water clocks and an obelisk. An obelisk is that tall structure you see there. It throws a shadow onto the ground. Depending on what time of day it is, the shadow will be in a different spot as the sun moves across the sky. And then the water clock, as you can see in the center picture, they would pour water into the top of a cylinder or a, uh, an earthen bowl, and the water would drip out at a very even amount from the bottom. So depending on how much water was gone, you knew how much time had passed. Those are just a few of the many achievements of the Egyptians. Politics. Now, politics refers to anything to do with government. So as far as who leads the country, how the laws are made, the judicial system, that is comes under the heading of politics. So the leader or king in Egypt was the pharaoh, and he had ultimate power. He had absolute control over Egypt. He had a right-hand man that he chose, which was called a vizier, and he was the second in command and helped the pharaoh run Egypt. 
Then Egypt was divided into separate areas called gnomes, and each gnome was ruled over by a local governor who was called a nomarch. So that was the basic political system. As mentioned before, part of what comes under the heading of politics are laws. And the laws in ancient Egypt were, f uh, they generally followed the teachings of Ma'at, who was the goddess of justice. And most of the rulings were based on common sense. If I accuse somebody of stealing from me and I have evidence to prove it, then they would be guilty. Very basic, common sense way of running things. So the, there were lower courts, which were run by the local elders. They sat as judges for each case. There were no law, lawyers. So if I wanted to sue somebody, I would be the plaintiff. I would sue someone who is the defendant. I would state my case to the elders. The defendant would state his case, give any evidence that we had, and then the elders would decide whether or not the defendant was guilty. If he was guilty, one common punishment would to be was to be exiled from Egypt, meaning they would have to leave, and not just the defendant would be exiled, but his family would as well. Now you could appeal a decision up to as high as the pharaoh. He was the final say. So there was there were two levels of court the lower court where everything was heard, and then an appeals type of court. We're moving on to the economy. The economy is, has to do with the means of production. What, what does an area produce? How do they distribute their produce? How do they do business? And the main economy, particularly in uh, old Egypt, was agricultural. Thanks to the gift of the Nile, they had excellent fertile soil and were able to grow many kinds of crops. Then the government would tax the people and business owners in Egypt. Unlike today, you, you did not pay with currency or money. You had to pay with products. Whatever you produced, you'd have to give a portion of that to the government so that they would have uh, funds to build structures and other things that the Egyptians may need. The Egyptians were also excellent traders. Again, thanks to the Nile, they could trade up and down the Nile. They had many valuable items to trade with other peoples as well as within themselves. They had gold, papyrus, linen, cedar wood, uh, ivory, lapis lazuli, which is a blue semi-precious gemstone. And they would have markets, open markets, where everybody would sell their wares. That's what you're looking at a picture of here. S, society. So this gives you from the top of the hierarchy down to the bottom, the most powerful person down to the least. And of course, at the top is the Pharaoh, the absolute monarch of Egypt. Below him were the priests. Religion was extremely important in the early civilizations. It filtered into every part of life, and therefore the priests were very important and had power, as well as the nobles. The nobles were the rich land-owning uh, men who also helped to run the country and had a lot of power. Below the nobles were the peasants, and these were. this is where most people would fall into this category. And you had your farmers and your poorer people were the peasants. Finally, at the bottom, you had slaves, and Egyptians did have slaves. Normally, they were people who had been conquered. So you got your pharaoh, priests, 
nobles, peasants, and slaves. Those are the big categories in, in Egyptian society. And when it comes to family life, the family, the nuclear family, which is mom, dad, the kids, grandma, grandpa, were extremely important in Egypt. It was the foundation of Egyptian society. Families were very proud of their lineage. They would pass down stories about grandparents and great grandparents so that uh, people took great pride in their family line. Egyptian women had more equality than in other ancient civilizations. They could do many things. They could choose to divorce their husbands. They would be on juries. They would testify in trials. They could inherit real estate and they could even disinherit ungrateful children. All right, so that is a quick overview of rapes. Can you answer the three questions? Hopefully you can. Hopefully you paid attention. And if you did, I always end my videos with a corny riddle just as a thank you for paying attention. I love corny riddles, and here's the corny riddle for today. Now think about this. What does a baby computer call his father? Dada, get it, dada, dada. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.